famous Italian subs. I'm headed in to check out an Italian sub at one of the local legends. And we're gonna get deep into analysis this time. And that's starting right now. Now I've been in this area almost 30 years and I've never been to Reganese. And they actually have a pretty extensive selection of Italian imports. So just seeing that, I know I'm gonna be back here to pick up some of that stuff when I'm craving those Italian foods. And where this is gonna get really interesting, since this is a place that I don't frequent, but is really popular in the area, my reaction here is completely cold. And just based on the hype that I get in the area, Raganese is like one of the top subs in the area. Pretty much everybody that you talk to will recommend Raganese, and that's kind of why I'm here. So it'll be interesting to see what their sub tastes like. I was really impressed walking through that market. A lot of things I'm familiar with from my dad's deli, things that you really don't see in this area a lot. And it was also reassuring to see that they do boar's head cold cuts. Always love that. I ordered the Italian mix sub, which was $13.50. So let's crack into it and see what we got. So getting into this, I can see some things that I really like about it and some things I really dislike about it so far. We have to resort to the car today because it's rainy and I, I don't know, I don't, it's kind of a, a silly little day here. One thing I can see here, building up, it kind of starts with provolone cheese, then the pepperoni layer, then there's a ton of capicola ham, and then there's a little bit of salami on top of that. But anyway, we're gonna break it all down at the home studio. So for right now, let's see how it tastes and let's get into it. <laughs> Very interesting. I gotta go in for another bite. I don't think I got enough there on that first bite. So this here is very good. As I ordered it, I noticed that they actually sliced everything nice and fresh, which is exactly what you wanna see in an Italian deli like this. I also got to see a lot of what they had as far as the imports. I did notice that they had pastosa ravioli, which are ravioli from like the Brooklyn, Staten Island area that are like probably some of the best that you can get. But back to this sub, there's kind of three different areas we need to talk about. There's the bread, which I'm a little bit kind of in the neutral zone on. There's the meats, which there's a flaw here, and we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna get into it. And then there's the toppings. Interestingly, there oil and vinegar dressing has balsamic vinegar, which I notice in this area here is pretty common. But the one thing that's kind of, to me, a little bit dicey about using balsamic on a sub is that it's kind of overpowering. But in this case here, I think they applied it in such a way that it's not too bad. And in fact, I think it actually works really well. Now there's one thing on this sub I think is pretty divisive. And I actually saw on Facebook, somebody recently put up a post basically saying that the only lettuce to put on an Italian sub is slices of romaine lettuce. I couldn't disagree more. This one does have the romaine lettuce. And where I think it falls apart a little bit there is that it doesn't have kind of a layer of crunchiness that you can kind of bite through that you would achieve with like thinly sliced lettuce. But this is a very good sub. Let's get back to the home studio and we'll break it down bit by bit, including getting into all the meats and kind of the order of things and how it all goes into the overall taste of this sub. Breaking down Ranganese, it's kind of one of those things. This place is pretty much just about the same size as my dad's deli. They had a lot more freezer space though, but they also have a deli counter, a little arrow pointing to where you order. So when I ordered my sub, I just basically told them to go with the Italian and as we always do you clarify what the customer wants A lot of times customers don't want onions So it's good that they ask the question, but I like to get it loaded up lettuce tomato onion oil and vinegar I didn't want to complicate it by adding any hot peppers even though that's kind of my jam I just wanted to keep it simple for the analysis here as far as what I tasted it was very good But there were flaws in pretty much every layer of assembly here. So let's go into it Let's first talk about the bread now This is gonna be a little bit controversial what I say here because I know a lot of places in the area use this bread because it's kind of one of the local favorites and it's widely available and that's Prinzo's bread. I'm not saying it's bad bread because that's not true at all. It's actually fairly good bread, especially for up here. But where this comes in is a little bit inappropriate for assembling for this type of sandwich. It's way too crusty. It's essentially a small loaf of Italian bread and crusty Italian bread and Italian mixes, in my humble opinion, don't really mix. Even in my dad's store, we used to sometimes do special occasion sandwiches where we would actually make them on Italian bread. And I think that's okay if it's gonna sit for a little while and you let the things mingle into the bread. But the Prinzo's roll, in my opinion, is a little bit too hard for an Italian sub. Now, that's my preference. A lot of these places have been doing this for many years, and I'm sure combined hundreds of years. So don't take that as me saying that things need to change, because if it's working for you, go with it. The assembly of the meats I thought was really interesting. So like I said, there's a handful of meats on the sandwich, and I'm gonna include the cheese in with the meats as well. It looks like what they do for the provolone, which is at the base of the sandwich. They slice it and then kind of fold them in half to, so it kind of rips and then they 
layer it across the sandwich. Definitely a good amount of provolone. It's sliced on the kind of thick side for me, but they use a nice flavorful provolone. The meats is where it gets really interesting because they start with a base of pepperoni, then they add the capicola ham, which is like a ham with red pepper on the outside. We talked about it a little bit in our Jersey Mike's video. And then they put the salami on top. So one of the things that I actually criticized Jersey Mike's about was that they just had hams on top of hams and salamis on top of salamis. And when you do that, everything just kind of mixes in. And to a certain degree, ham versus salami, it's kind of the same thing, right? Although salami is a cured meat and pepperoni is a cured meat, the fact that they break it up by putting the ham in between those definitely gives you the opportunity to chew through a lot of different textures. And I think that's kind of a cool touch here. Another interesting thing, they actually put what I would call the base of the sandwich, the lettuce, tomato, and onion on top of the meats. So as you go from the bottom here, you got a little bit of bread, which I think they actually put a little bit of oil and vinegar on there. Then your provolone, pepperoni, ham capicola, Genoa salami, then your onions, then your lettuce, then your tomato, and a nice healthy serving of balsamic vinegar across the top of that bread. So let's talk about the toppings. The tomato and the onion, they use red onion, which is a nice touch. I love thinly sliced red onions on a sandwich. And interestingly, they were kind of mild as far as onions go, but the lettuce here was really interesting. Just slabs of romaine lettuce across the top of it. And the tomato was tomato. We're not even gonna really talk about it. We're kind of in the heart of winter. So tomatoes on sandwiches don't really come to add a whole lot. And as far as an Italian sub, you kind of don't want a really, really high quality tomato anyway. You just want whatever's run of the mill and whatever they're using on a frequent basis, right? But that lettuce is a sticking point for me. And around the same time as I filmed this Rangonese sub, I also filmed Sovranas and noticed they do the romaine lettuce thing too, which I really don't get. Everywhere you go in New York City or New Jersey or downstate, Rockland County, Orange County, it's sliced iceberg lettuce. Not only does it provide a nice layer of crunchiness to kind of break up the texture of the soft meat, soft bread, although in this case here we have a bread that's a little harder than usual, but the sliced lettuce also has a little bit of taste. And here, when you have just one layer of romaine lettuce, it's not doing anything for the flavor of the sandwich. It's just there to provide this kind of slippery layer, especially when you're putting the oil and vinegar up against it. So I don't get it. Now this could be an example of kind of modeling to your clientele. When I saw that post on Facebook, I was kind of in the minority being opposed to romaine lettuce on subs, whereas a lot of the people who are local people, and this post was on a high visibility person who works for the Times Union News. So you're gonna get a lot of people who are local, but it seemed like a lot of local people really enjoyed the romaine lettuce on their sub. And again, I'm not saying to change anything, nothing wrong with romaine lettuce on a sub. I just don't think it really comes to add much as far as the flavor here. And even for texture, until you get to those like really, really crunchy parts of the heart, you kind of really don't even notice it's there. Assembly of the meats is something that we got to talk about here as well. Now, I mentioned when we talked about the Jersey Mike's video that I'm a fan of putting piles of everything on top. Now, because they're using everything that's circular from your provolone cheese, then you have your pepperoni, which is a round cold cut, your ham capicola, which is also a little bit of a larger round cold cut, then your hard salami, which is also a round cold cut, at least the way they slice it. Really, the only natural way to assemble this on a sub is in layers, which is kind of what they do here. But I'm always a fan of kind of piling it on the sandwich. Admittedly, it's harder to do with circular cold cuts, but it kind of gives you more air in the sandwich to bite through, which gives you a little bit of pockets to actually taste stuff, as opposed to just biting through a slab of meats that have been layered on top of each other. You gotta chew for a while before you start to taste different things in that. And when I was talking about the order of the meats, I'm kind of splitting hairs in terms of like, yeah, you taste pepperoni and salami separately because of the fact that it's just like one big dense slab of meat by the time it all sits on the sub for a little bit. I will say though, all the meats slice nice and thin, so good on them for that. And I love the fact that they're slicing them fresh to order and not pulling them out of some kind of refrigerated container because you see that a lot around here. Overall taste, this is definitely a really good sub. For $13.50, they're definitely priced right where a lot of places are around this time. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of meat on this thing. You got a nice fresh piece of bread. You're obviously paying for quality. And the fact that it's in this nice Italian import shop, you can at least walk out of there knowing that you ordered a really high quality Italian sub and then go back to your desk or your home or wherever, your car if you're me, and enjoy that thing. Pretty respectable. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit it with a like. I'm breaking down a lot of the local Italian subs and also a lot of the chain subs. So if you enjoy stuff like that, you're gonna wanna subscribe. And if you wanna go deeper into my opinions on Italian subs, click into this playlist right here and I'll see you in the next video.